want to kind of cover some of the things that happen in Polygon Connect and altogether uh, the future of kind of the Polygon ecosystem. So my kind of first question is, what's up with the POL token? <laughs> POL token. Um, so when we, and this is a kind of an interesting story that, um, you know, these days we, everybody is talking about like multi-chain and all that stuff, right? And I, when, when we were starting Polygon and in the white paper itself, like, you know, I had uh, mentioned that, you know, in future there'll be multi-chain ecosystem and this and that. But then this is also the time, uh, this is like early 20, 2019, right? So we have the world or the crypto world has just seen... The world L2 did not exist. Uh, the world L2 did not exist, but the world has also seen so many of these scam tokens launch which are like also when they go live, they've, they've been minted and the people are minting new tokens and then dumping into the market and all that. So when we were about to get into the listings and all that uh, process, and then there I mentioned that, you know, right now we have this much supply and this percentage is basically will be reserved for res uh, inflation of one chain. And as we launch more chains, that time I, I had a very primitive idea of this inflation. I said, as we launch more chain, a certain percentage will mint for every new chain. And the moment when the exchanges will see this, is like, what the hell? Like, you know, I'm going to look. <laughs> yeah, this is a new concept. And who mints yeah. the token and all that? And, and then, you know, then we had to say, the, one of them, uh, the bigger one of them, like, got really uh, pissed at that. So, okay, we said, no, 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 we are not doing this. And, you know, we will not have it. And, and we'll see when the, the multi-chain happens. And then in 2020, 2021, uh, actually, when we, you know, migrated to Polygon or up, 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 upgraded to Polygon, that which is a multi-chain vision, uh, we had to. We had mentioned that we will have to upgrade this token into a uh, you know multi-chain conducive token. The current token is not that. So, then walk us through what is this multi-chain vision for Polygon, and what does this mean for the Matic token? Yeah. So, from our side, like we are not like I, I keep saying that you know we are not building for like you know to create a blockchain which acquires some network effects and you know just you know, stays there. What we are building is we are very, very clear and we are relentlessly clear at that time. We we, we refuse to choose, uh, you know, kind of any path. It might have a pragmatic, you know, intermediate stop, but the path has to e eventually go to the actual mission and the mission is to have this planetary scale, unlimited scaling, uh, you know, blockchain ecosystem, wherein, you know, like, I keep giving the example of Internet 2.0. In Internet 2.0, you don't have a fixed TPS. Like, you know, AWS doesn't... Have you have you heard AWS saying that we have 1 million TPS or 5 million TPS and all that, right? It's 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 all... Like, it's not a shared... You, you assume it exists and you assume it's infinite. Yes, you exist. And it's practically infinitely scalable. Like, as many mobile apps want to launch, as many web apps want to launch, whoever wants to launch, whatever, you have practically infinite scalability. And then the other part of this is that the information, this is like Web2 is the internet of information and that information is seamlessly composable, right? So basically we are creating the content here. This will go into YouTube, anybody in any country with any kind of internet service, whether it is GPRS or it's broadband, doesn't matter, everybody can consume it. The same thing will be will ha or will have to be true for Web3 or whatever ecosystem or whatever uh, you know, protocol becomes the uh, becomes the application layer of uh, Web three, and we that's what we are we are trying to build. So these two properties are very important for us: infinite scalability and seamless composability. These two things are most important. So what is Polygon? So Polygon, and today my talk at Polygon uh, Connect also, I said that Polygon is about to be born. We are not even born yet. Right, which is all we have is kind of like POC. So there's a very long incubation for five years. Yes. yes, yes. It's like five years incubation. We had to, like we diverged multiple times, research a lot of things. But now we have an idea with this ZK uh, cryptography in place that, you know, this is the architecture which if nothing changes, no new technology is discovered, this architecture will still be able to scale to that, you know, infinite TPS. And so just two components, like infinite scalability that is achieved by Polygon CDK you can launch, anybody can launch as many number of chains or dedicated chains, shared chains, ecosystem chains, whatever you want to launch, you have the, you can launch the chains. And then we have this aggregator layer, which where all the chains submit their proofs and those proofs, uh, 
you know, are aggregated and, and you know, one single proof is submitted to Ethereum. Using that aggregated proof, all these chains can, uh, you know, have inter in cross-chain interoperability between them. And right huge. now it will be, right now it will be slower. Like in January, which I say day minus one of Polygon when we launch LXLY, that will be like 30 minutes because every chain is still submitting the proof to Ethereum. And then somewhere in the Q2, which is the day zero of Polygon, we will have this fast aggregation layer where each chain can submit the proof in a matter of like from, from few seconds, like five to 10 seconds to initially maybe one minute. But then these chains will have cross-chain asynchronous uh, composability, uh, you know, in one to two minutes time. Eventually, we want to take it to 15 to 20 seconds, which almost like it's Ethereum. Normal like. block time for Ethereum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like this is, um, and then this, this whole chain or this whole ecosystem with hundreds and hundreds of these chains that will that will feel like one single chain. Like as a user, you will be clicking something and there will be in the background, there are intent-based framework, whoever, people can build middlewares on top of that. But then you're, you are playing some game somewhere, your tokens goes to other chain, get swapped to a, in a public chain, your USD is deposited back and a, as a user, you are just having a simple interface like a payment uh, gateway interface. And that's a pretty exciting world. Um, yeah. One thing that sort of led you to say all this thing is a pretty heavy focus on a lot of ZK research I had to do years before to kind of be at this place right now. Can you walk us through what made you realize that this is the, the future and you had to kind of start investing now to be ready two years later? And, uh, and what's kind of uniquely enabled by a lot of the ZK primitives that was not possible with the way Matic was designed initially? Yeah. Um, I think like, you know, in, in India, like especially the people who know Hindi, they would know this, uh, you know, phrase that Dood ka jala uh, charge bhi ke bhi la. That means like, or or like once bitten, twice shy, right? Like in English also you have this. So when we started the plasma research, right? And at that point in time, the whole Ethereum community was gung ho on plasma and this and that. And every people ate, raised tens of billions of dollars. We could raise only 150K or whatever. But we said that we'll deliver the plasma in this, right? We kept building, building, building. And by the time we are like three months away from our mainnet, suddenly we, we see an announcement that, that some VCs, you know, invested in this, in the plasma group who were running the plasma group. And then suddenly this is no longer plasma. We are now converting into optimistic rollups and plasma is dead. Like th th that line was plasma is dead. And we had this hard choice at that point in time that, you know, okay, whether we keep pursuing plasma or we should also pivot to optimistic rollups or what do we do? And that at that time we did the evaluation and we found that, you know, we, we saw, we, we read optimistic rollups and it was, we realized that these are at best, this is at best an intermediate solution because in optimistic rollups also, you're still putting all the data on Ethereum, you're still throttled by the uh, the capacity of Ethereum, the gas fees are still pretty high and users, don't, uh, developers need better uh, platform for that. So at that point in time, when we researched about this, we researched ZK also and, uh, you know, with some amount of research, even though we knew that this might take more time, this might take three years, optimistic rollups will come much faster. But then we were very clear that this is the end game. And for me, it was like, I did not want to get into one more technology yeah. which gets outdated very soon. I wanted to be all in, like spend 10 years of my life, dedicate them to building something which is, which is end game, right? Is this a hindsight comment or you knew that this is the right move and you were going to make this work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, see, if you see 2021, uh, you know, we had the benefit of hindsight of plasma and plasma, you know, crashing and burning, right? And then, so that's why, you know, we had we, we had the benefit of hindsight as well as the, you know, like this this thing, like, you know, no, I don't want to do temporary stuff because, see, as a... You've seen how that game ends. Yes. Yeah, and as a founder, like anybody who's here and they are, uh, you know, they've founded some companies the most painful feeling you have is that you are giving, like, it's a hard job. Like, entrepreneurship is like, it's a really hard. Like, I don't wish, especially we are three entrepreneurship, I don't wish on people because you have to have, you have full shenanigans of a start startup, everything, talent, fundraise, this, that, product market fit, all at the same time. Plus token you have, like, you have to manage the community and <clears throat> you are a pri public company on day zero almost, right? And then in, 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 the, in the natural, traditional world, uh, and I said natural, I, this, this is not natural, right? And so in the traditional world, you still have to like, you have to publish reports, but every quarterly you publish report. Here, every minute, some community member is tagging you, abusing you on Twitter. Why is this, this happening? Why is the token? So it's like so hard. And 
I don't wish it on other people. And so it's very painful, right, as a founder. And what I, you know, realized that I, and, you know, obviously I had done multiple, like, previous, like, startups also, right? And the most painful feeling is that you are giving it your, your all, but you know that this is not, this is not big enough. This is not going to go where you want to take. And that feeling, I did not want to have this this one. Like, I did not want to do one more temporary thing. I wanted to do this thing. Either it becomes the it's edge like game. It's a binary, or yes. Now it goes, yeah, 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 yeah. All in kind of thing, basically. That, that's awesome to hear. And, and here you are managing two tokens. Huh? <laughs> you have now two tokens yet to manage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah now, now, yes, now we will have... Uh, this is basically... Pool is an upgrade. It's not a new token, by the way. And uh, you... The supply remains the same. Right. You just, just upgrade it to the pool. Uh, so it's more of a, yeah. of a transfer to... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so... You kind of mentioned this already. Let's let's talk about what CDK is. So, mm. why did you have to create Polygon CDK? Why not create a a massive zk rollup that everybody can just use? Yeah. So, see, on that, like we have, the, like yesterday also, I posted about this monolithic blockchain, right? Like you know, monolithic blockchain where you mean that one single state machine is there, and you are thinking that you know the whole world will read from this single state machine, and whole world will will be building on this. And it's very easy, like you don't need to be a computer scientist to understand that, you know, this has limits of physics. It's like, you know, you having one big computer, even though you optimized it, you do whatever with it, but you still can't have the whole world's, uh, you know, applications running on that single computer. This is absolutely not possible. So that same thesis is applicable for the, you know, any kind of chain you're building, whether it's a layer one or whether you want to build like layer one, like, you know, these monolithic layer ones, and whether you want to build a you know, like a ZK EVM or a layer two, no single chain is going to take this thing. And second thing is that you need to, like, I see, and this is like, uh, you know, I, I see that a single state machine chain and you saying that everything in the world should exist on this chain is almost like, you know, feels similar to communism. Like you have <laughs> one single ecosystem, everything goes So you're saying you don't want a world computer? No, I don't want a world computer. I want, uh, I want world internet which is running on thousands and th millions and millions. That's a great analogy. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so I say that this, this layer two analogy is more closer to capitalism. Because why? Like Polygon CDK, for example, I'll give you. Today it offers you, a pol Today it offers you one kind of VM, which is EVM. And you know, right now you can run it on a single uh, sequencer capacity. Now you see that we have efforts with uh, a near ZK Bosom. We have an effort going on with today with Hyper Oracles, which is building, who are building ZK based oracles, and they are also building a type 1 ZK Wasm. And very soon, in six months from now, you will have a Polygon CDK where you can choose which VM you want, right? So you want That's a cool. Wasm VM, you, you want a, this VM, which programming language? If you have Wasm, you can use other kind of programming language, right? So this is one. Then you can also choose what kind of decentralization you want. Like somewhere in the queue, what options do I have? Is it just is either decentralized or not? Yes, so you can choose that. So right now you can have one single sequencer chain, but next year we will we are implementing the IBFT like a uh, Comet BFT uh, Tendermint uh, latest version on that. So you can actually launch your layer two, and you can have multiple validators on that. So you have decentralized, or you can just run it yourself, or run, you okay. can run, yeah, single sequencer or multi sequencer. You can do what you want to do, right? The third one is whether you want to have privacy on this chain or not. So the Maiden VM has inbuilt privacy uh, foundation. You have to build like, you know, right now, we don't, because privacy is a very touchy subject. So we will, you know, put it out and then people can do what they want to do with that. But then the point I'm trying to make here is this is very similar to capitalism, right? Where you as a developer, you can choose which VM, which kind, like uh, whether you want which to have a programming plan, language, which programming language, which kind of decentralization. And these VMs, like people keep talking, oh, this monolithic layer one, Alt L1 has uh, parallel computing. So what, like, you know, the we will have on Maiden, v, EV, Maiden VM, you will have a parallel computation, right? And you can process like huge amount of uh, TPS on that uh, when it's fully mature. So these kind of things will keep coming. And I think that's why this layer two model where Ethereum is the base settlement layer. And then you have... Uh, you have application layer. On an application layer, these layer twos will look more and more like, you know, your uh, AWS versus GCP versus this, and the markets will have like a one one large shareholder will have like, you know, right, because people, people want to have it managed and yeah. somebody will just manage that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of actually very, very fascinating. What, what effectively was kind of 
the thinking around making this more accessible? Because because it, it seems like we kind of introduced now layer three here because because the way you kind of hierarchy wise describe this thing, you are now doing another application. But do we still run into the same problem of well, there's going to be a capacity problem on this one, so somebody either needs to go up or aside, and you kind of still don't really solve the traffic issue. So how do you kind of think about the future being more modular this way, or does it lead to just now one CDK that's going to behave like a monolithic CDK because that's the most popular application? No, no. So how we see is that, so like this is the topology today, right? So you have this polygon CDK chains, and then you have an aggregator. That aggregator can take, let's say, roughly with our internal tests, it can take with 100, 250 validators, like 8,000 chains per second. Because each transaction on the aggregator layer is one chain, right? So you have 8,000 chains. And if this, each chain has, let's say, 1,000 TPS, so you can already imagine that you have 8 million yeah. TPS in this one, right? Then if, let's say, it goes beyond 8,000 chains, right? So what you do is you just spin off one, you spin up one more aggregator layer, right? The, with the same uh, kind of validator setting. I see. And then that validator layer, and then you have a comp aggregate that. Because you can do interoperability there, it behaves like a single one. Exactly. And Amazing. Th this aggregator layer is actually, it does not have any problem with sharding and all that, because this is like individual separate state on that, and uh, this is fully parallelizable. Also, you are not doing any ledger transactions there, right? You're just storing the proofs there. So you can have like one aggregator, another aggregator, you can have 8,000 of these aggregators, which will be aggregated in the next day. So the... But when you are talking about layer two, layer three, you are essentially talking about fractal growth, yes. right? Yeah. But the, the, in this architecture, the you, you scale the aggregator horizontal. layer. Yeah. The aggregator layer is fractally, uh, you know, growing. But the execution layer is like one single layer. So everyone oh, is a layer two, and everyone is connected to every other chain. That's awesome. I mean, you, you kind of just softly announced that you can do eight million transactions per second, <laughs> which is uh, which is incredible. Um, what what has been some of the, the popular uh, applications that have uh, been launched on CDK or are in the process of launching? Yeah. So the biggest one is basically like Immutable X, which is basically used to be like Polygon has a large sh share of the gaming market, like 80, 90% of that. And then, uh, uh, you know, uh, when Immutable was there, we used to be like the biggest competitors in the gaming, like I think Immutable and Polygon. And they used to have 30, 40% of the market. Polygon has like 40, 50% but then they uh, joined out. So they are now moving their entire infrastructure from Starkware to uh, this Immutable X. This morning, uh, Merit Circle, which is the uh, uh, which was like on a subnet, Avalanche subnet, uh, they are also moving over and, you know, using CDK. Then you have uh, one of the largest exchanges, uh, you know, OKX, which is like upcoming. That's a big one. They're, they're, they're growing really, really big. Uh, more than, you know, uh, Coinbase, uh, you know, daily visitors and daily users and things like that. They are also launching. Then you have a lot of other uh, ones also today, like here, Flipkart, which is the you know the crown jewel of uh, Indian startup industry. They launched their Flipkart CDK chain, which now like a lot of Indian developers were previously scared of crypto, right? But they wanted to build something in blockchain, and this is also a good use case for the government. Also, that this is not crypto, this blockchain. Like this blockchain is just submitting a proof. It in the backend, right. yeah. And and Flipkart doesn't even need to now. You have meta transaction services. They don't even need to interact with crypto if they don't want to. They just can swipe their credit card on on a, like a cloud platform where they are just sending their Somebody moves. can just manage all of that. Yeah. yeah. So they don't even uh, need to. That's a pretty amazing, incredible news. So. And card is big. Yeah, that's that's pretty big. And I think like you know this can uh, act as an inflection point because a lot of fintech players want to launch these uh, financial applications. They could launch their uh, Flipkart has like captive one hundred million users, right? So. Uh, what you can do over there is uh, is like yeah so many great things so there are like multiple like that like there are like the idex which is a previously existing uh, like dex they want to launch very soon i remember idex many from people. the good old days many big ones huh i remember idex from the good old days yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so that's so actually very impressive uh, this is this is incredible progress maybe to kind of wrap things up let's kind of hear about what does it mean for the future of Polygon now? Like the, the company, the protocol, all, all together, kind of where you are spending your time. You kind of said you wanted to kind of focus on the end game, which is, hey, let's we have the ZK infrastructure. We invested all this time in R&D, and now we are ready to kind of scale things with CDK. Does this mean that the next few years are about just now getting people to build on top? Or 
Does that mean there's still more R&D to do? There's still more things that are hard problems that you haven't solved yet? What is What kind of state is the company in now? Yeah, so I think Polygon 2.0, all our research problems are solved. These are like now engineering problems and not even hard engineering problems. Right? Implementation all, time. It's all implementation and maturization process, which takes its own due course. Uh, so that's going on and, and, and you know, we'll have like the first time we will have a first fully coherent story of Polygon. What is Polygon? Like previously we were like, is Polygon POS? Is ZKVM? And what the, you know? Is it a side chain? <laughs> it's a side chain. It's a, I, you know, Polygon Maiden, ID, CDK, uh, so many things. So uh, now we will have a one single, like in next, by next Q2, we'll have a one single concerted, you know, kind of story of Polygon also, by the way, like which is very important for the Polygon brand. And the future, as you mentioned, one important thing, like, you know, we opening up, right? So we have actually, like, we did all of this research, but all of our provers are fully open source and other stacks can also use it. And what is happening is due to that, like, for example, near protocol, which is a layer one, they want to launch, they want to have like these, their proof of their whole WASM chips on Ethereum. Recent announcement about the DA layer. Yes. yes. And that kind of consolidates Ethereum's position also as a, as a, you know, uh, settlement layer, de facto, de facto settlement layer. And same prover is now, you know, now few chains in the Cosmos ecosystem are looking to use them. Then we want to make it available for other layer two stacks also, like for example, OP stack and uh, Arbitrum stack. Like we want to make uh, these provers available to them because we want to play more on the aggregation, proof aggregation layer. And, you know, on the chain level block space, who is running uh, the block space uh, is perfectly fine. We don't, we don't mind. And we already have like, for example, Manta network, uh, very uh, solid team. They are they 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 have a OP stack chain, and they are like you know currently you know implementing the CDK provers uh, onto them. So we want to make it as open as possible, kind of following the Ethereum's philosophy. Like you know you have the EVM build in public and have and, people improve it collectively. Yes, and if people some people want to fork it, they want to build their own. Okay, just play the long term game and see like you know whatever markets will choose whatever is uh, you know uh, good for the long term and whatever makes markets more efficient. So, so yeah, that's the that's the future from our side. Like as I said, that the Q2 next year, our product roadmap will be like level one complete. Then after that is like okay, you we need to add consensus on this one, and we need to have more VMs and all that. So I say that this is basically next year Q2 is basically 2015 of Ethereum for us, right? So that's where we'll be born. So that's the most important thing. And that's a wonderful note to end this on, Sandeep. Thank you so much for telling us about the future of Polygon. Yeah. And thank you. Thank give you. Give a big round of applause. Thanks for listening.